Hello and welcome to Builderbot. Uh, we've got a bit of a special episode for you today and I'll explain more about that in a minute. But as always, uh, with me is Kent Weir. Hey, Kent. Hey, Matt. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we have uh, another member of the PowerCat team with us today um, and I'll let him introduce himself. But uh, if uh, say hello to, to Daniel. Hey, Daniel. Hi, hey. Hello. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself, but Daniel's been working with us in the PowerCat team as our summer intern for the last three months. Um, and this session, we're going to go into some really cool and useful stuff he's been doing with Power Virtual Agents and some other Power Platform technologies. But uh, before we go into that, Daniel, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? This is uh, my second uh, internship, uh, professional internship. Um, I actually applied mathematician and computer science in Pesad Atlan. Uh, I work remote from Mexico. Um, yeah, I just say that I'm really happy to to work here. <laughs> and of course, because you're in the PowerCat team, you can't leave us without joining us on a video or two. So, uh, so thank you for for joining us. Um, do you want to explain a little bit more about uh, what your project entailed? My project uh, was to uh, create a chatbot with uh, Power Platform technology. I use Power Virtual Agents to to mount in teams to create this chatbot and use uh, Power Automate uh, to get data like at the in the backend and use um, Framework Composer to show yeah at least uh, at data that get for, from Power uh, Automate in 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 Power Virtual Agents like a bottom so so yeah that's really cool project. <laughs> And I guess this is one of those features that is highly in demand by customers. This idea that you can have dynamic buttons, dynamic lists, and that's what uh, Daniel's going to show us in our demo. So why don't we uh, go ahead and, and see the demo in action, then we'll do a deeper dive after. Okay, so the, the main trigger to, to use the, the chatbot is to say hi and show uh, some options. Uh, the first option is uh, license details to check uh, license details for this user test. And uh, we see that use uh, just one license. So the other thing that we uh, use is uh, assign license for the user. So just click in assign license and introduce the uh, email and choose what license we want. So choose office if part. And the chatbot say that it's successful that segment. Yeah, we can check that to license details. So just click it in license details and uh, introduce the email. Uh, wait uh, a little time and we see that the license is a signal for the user. So the other thing is uh, check the environment list. So just click the environment list and wait uh, a few seconds to the chatbot response with all environments for for this user, um, we check it uh, the environment. Uh, other thing that we uh, have want to do is um, the machine list for a specific environment. So just click in the machine list and wait a second to uh, show the environment like a bottom. So just need to click it in the environment that we uh, we want to know the the machine list and wait a little seconds and the chatbot showed the machine list uh like a like a list yeah a, a static list so other thing that we want to do is uh get the floor status machine so just click the in floor status machine choose uh an environment a specific environment to the machine where is the the flow so just click it in, in the environment and wait a few seconds to show us the machines in, in this environment to, to, to choose one. So the chatbot shows uh, the machine list like a bottom. So just uh, click it in the machine. In this case, I just have one. So I click it in that and return a matrix with the flow name and the date name and the status code. And the other thing is uh, get uh, visual to Power BI. So just uh, click it in the bottom to machine help. And 
uh, the chat room returns a uh, image with the visual of Power BI. I did that with uh, Power Automate Technology, the backend. Uh, this is like an example that how I do that. I use uh, a HTTP request and tra transfer for the JSON and get the data things and return this, uh, these values for the uh, for the Power Virtual Legends. Uh, and in Azure Portal, uh, we use these uh, IDs to uh, get this information. So I I, I use uh, Azure Portal to do that. And for the bottom list, uh, I use a uh, framework composer to get data and transport in bottom to show at the user in in Power Virtual Agent. So here I create like a dialogue and just call for from uh, Power Virtual Agent. And here is like a, uh, like a little topic that I, I did that called difference uh, cloud flows and, and the process. I, I used uh, variables to know if this uh, flow, flow, flow flows what successfully. If yes, continue with, with the process. If not, show in what uh, cloud flow, uh, cloud flow uh, done, done wrote. So yeah, this is the demo. Well, that was a really cool demo, Daniel. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to go into some of the more PVA bits. I mean, it was really great to see all the Power Platform pieces coming together. And and just to clarify, you'd not worked with any of these before you started, right? Um, and to, until you started your internship, you hadn't used any Power Platform. Yes, uh, that, that's right. <laughs> You had to learn all this from scratch, which is which is fantastic. But we, I, what we I think would be really interesting is to look at what you did with Bot Framework Composer and PVA and Power Automate. Can you show us a bit more about how you did stuff with arrays and showed lists of items? I, I create uh, like a, a dynamic list bottom with Power Automate technology. Just uh, here in 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 my. Uh, Topic of Power Virtual Agents called an action in in uh, Power Cloud Flow. So for that, I uh, get a list of machines like a, a text se separate like a commas, and after that, I do that and create like a global variable with this information and called framework composer uh, topics. I receive the 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 variable and transfer in a hero card with a list of bottoms. So I, I just uh, get like a long string and create a sub string and I split uh, this this string for, for commas and send like a array with, with, with this string and show in a hero card, card uh, in bottom. So Fantastic. yeah, that, that's oh, the process. So I see. So inside of Power Automate, you have a call. The call is going to go retrieve all of the environments. And then in that Power Automate flow, you concatenate that into one long string. And you mm -hmm. sort of have used the common delimiter to delimit each of the individual environments. And then you pass that down to Composer. And then you essentially are going to go use a split function that will take that single string and create an array. And then you can use that array and overlay it inside of a hero car so that that all shows up as buttons. Yeah, that's right. And actually, in, in my uh, action of Cloudflow, I have a variable to to say at the Cloudflow if we want to this variable, this this long string like a list, static list, or list uh, separated by commas. And um, with that, I can get the information uh, in different forms. I can show. If I uh, click yes, I can show the machine list like a, a markdown things. If I click no, I have a long string and just a long string to to transfer in the uh, both Franco composer. Very cool. And so another thing that uh, was new for me as well was the Power BI visual tile. Now, how the heck did you go ahead and implement that? I've never seen that before. 
um, in any project, but I can see its usefulness. So how did you manage to, to go ahead and include that Power BI tile? Yeah, so for that, I uh, used Power BI API. So let me, let me share the topic. And just while you're getting to that, this this idea came about more of a, I wonder if we could, I wonder if this is possible approach. And Daniel just ran with it to work out a, a, a way to do it. So uh, we're going to see it now. Yeah, actually, the tile is, is, is no, not ready. So I, I, I create uh, some flows to 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 get the dashboard things. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I call uh, HTTP uh, Power BI things, and this gives me the uh, the dashboard like a list and transform here like a bottom, so and after choose the visuals and get like a URL embed. So with this URL embed, I, I can embed in one thing, and I, I try to to embed that with SDK framework. Oh, okay, so Power BI does allow for the embedding of visuals. So you're able to take advantage of the embed code that's available in Power BI by calling an API, and then you can use that embed code inside of a composer dialog and then get it to render that out back to the client. Is that right? That, that's right. Okay. Very oh. cool. I learned something new today. <laughs> <laughs> I learned two things new today, just on this call alone. So very cool. And I think what's great is both of these really show that pattern of um, you still use Power Automate to make it easy to go and get that data from wherever your data is. But but the, the method you've shown there of taking a variable, passing it into Bot Framework Composer um, to then do the processing and render them out as complicated cards, you know, um, is 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 one that uh, applies to a number of scenarios, and I suspect the people watching this will benefit from uh, following that pattern in their use cases too. Yeah, right. very much so. Fantastic. Um, have you enjoyed your internship, Daniel? Have you enjoyed working with Power Platform? Have you enjoyed working with Matt? I guess is the other question. <laughs> well, uh, you don't have to answer that one if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's really funny, and I learned a lot of things and. Um, yeah, I, I feel support for 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 these things. I I just uh, have idea and talk with Matthew and talk with with Pranab to hey, what do you think about this? And and Pranab and Matthew say yeah, I just try it and and that I feel so support for 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 him for there. Oh, that's that's excellent. And yes, uh, Pranav, uh, for those folks. Um, wondering, so Pranav is part of the Power Automate cat side of things. So we have a, a similar video to this, but more focused on the Power Automate side of things on the automated uh, playlist that we have. So obviously subscribe and watch both of them. But uh, yes, both Pranav and Matt spent uh, a lot of time with Daniel over the course of the last three months. So I want to thank them both for getting involved. And, uh, you know, we've got a great outcome here. So we've got a really neat solution. Um, that uh, we'll find a way to make it available to other folks and other customers in the future because I think this is all addressing use cases that automation COEs and other groups that can take advantage of as well. Well, thank thank you to Daniel for joining us uh, here on Builderbot and thank you for all for watching. Um, we'll be back with another Builderbot uh, with more ideas for Power Virtual Agents soon. Thanks.